Praise the Lord Lighthouse of the Valley family and to all of our viewers around the world. We want to welcome you again to our daily devotionals. And if this is your first time with us, we hope that you'll enjoy yourself, but more importantly, that you'll be comforted, exhorted, and edified during this season in your life. We are on a 21-day prayer journey, and we'd like for you to join with us. This is day 15 for us, but if you'd like to join in, just go to lighthouseofthevalley.org, click on 21 Days of Prayer, and you can see all the information there. Today, we're going to be talking about favor. Now, I've heard a lot of statements about favor, and, and everyone has a kind of thought on a little uh, cute things they say about favor. Favor is not fair. And, and I'm highly favored and blessed of the Lord. And, and those are good things to say because they do have some truth to it. And, and so we want to talk about favor today and pray about God's favor in our lives. We know that the Bible has a lot to say about it, and, and it comes in different forms. The word favor may not appear every time, but grace and other words like that actually extend favor to us. And, and the very act of God being in our, involved in our lives is considered favor. The Bible talks about grace being God's unmerited favor. In other words, a favor that we didn't even deserve. God conferred it upon us and we did nothing for it. God so loved us that he gave his only begotten son, but he so loved the world, not just us, but every person on the planet. And so he extended his favor, not only to us, but to the whole world. But let's see what Psalm chapter five, verse 12 has to say about this word favor. It says, for the Lord, will bless the righteous with favor, it goes on to say, wilt thou compass him as with a shield. In other words, favor will be all around us. You know, if you go into the New Testament and you read out of Ephesians chapter six, he says that he, for us to above every weapon that we take and everything we have to defend ourselves, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you'll be able to quench all the fiery or inflamed missiles launched at us from the enemy, all the inflamed darts it talks about. And really that, that shield that it, it's talking about is a shield that covers the whole body, not just the front shield and, and the frontal attacks, but the attacks that may come from the side or from the rear or anywhere else, even if you're gonna put a shield on top and, and cover yourself. But here's the deal, it is covering the whole man. The same way with this favor. God's favor of whatever it is, is covering the whole man and, and woman as well. If you're a woman, I'm talking to you as well. Strong's defines this word favor as pleasure, delight, goodwill, or acceptance. In other words, God extends this favor towards us. He takes delight in us. He takes a, a great pleasure in in dealing with us and he extends goodwill towards us and he accepts us just like we are. He may not say stay as you are, but he, he extends his hand of favor to us. And so there's different things you're gonna be involved in life and you need to understand that God has your best interest in mind and he, with his loving kindness or his favor, is he drawing you to himself, even to the backslider. He said, I love the backslider, I'm married to the backslider. And with his loving kindness or his favor, he draws them to himself. Merriman Webster defined this word favor as gracious kindness or an act of kindness. He goes on to say that words that are related to this are advantage, benefit, blessing, and even grace. In other words, God's grace and his, the benefits outweigh anything and everything that we can ever think of. Just think of something that, that you've done so bad and you come to God and you say, God, forgive me of this or that. And God's favor comes in there. His grace runs to the forefront. You have an advantage because of his favor. You have this ability to come to the throne of grace and obtain favor, obtain mercy and forgiveness and grace at your time of need. Whatever, you, whatever it is you need, all you need to come to is God and say, Lord, forgive me. And his favor is extended. We can't exhaust this word favor because God, favor is who, who, part of who God is and he's trying to extend it to everyone. But what we have to do is learn how to receive his favor. Favor, you know, it talks about it being a benefit. Well, we are, we are uh, beneficial and, and uh, we get certain benefits that not everyone gets once we start walking in his, in his favor. We start walking in his righteousness. His shield covers us and it's around us all the time. 
No matter where you go, what you do, God's favor is with you. Now, his favor is ex extended to those that are trying to come to him, and he's trying to draw them with his loving kindness. But there's something about you that makes you different, and his, ex and his favor is with you all the time. In other words, he's always surrounding you. He's always wooing after you. He's always reaching for you. He's always ready to give you the advantage. He's always ready to give you some benefits that you didn't even think were there. He's always ready to bless you. Scripture tells us in Psalm chapter 1, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor is seated in the seat of the scornful. But his delight or her delight is in the law of the Lord. This thing right here, the word of God. And in the law doth he meditate or she meditate day and night. You're going to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And whatever you do is going to prosper. Why? Because of the favor of God on your life. Other folks, for the wicked, it's not the same. But for those that are of the righteous seed, God will favor you above all men of the earth. So let's walk in the favor. Let's walk in the favor of God. And let's ask God to continue to walk with us and to be with us no matter what. That we can walk in this grace, this blessing, this benefit, all of the things that he's doing and how he's surrounding us like a shield. Amen? He is our shield and he is our buckler. We thank him for that. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for the men and women that are gathered here today and that are watching. I ask you, Lord, to extend your favor to them, that you would extend your grace to them. That, Lord, your acceptance for them, Lord God, and the benefits that you have for them. I pray in Jesus' name your good will would go towards them and they would know that it's you that is doing all of this in their lives. That, Lord, it's the unmerited favor. It's something they didn't work for. It's something that you extend freely of your own free will to us. We thank you, God, and we honor you. And I pray that every family member and everyone that's around them, Lord, would see this favor. They would see this benefit. They would see that... It, Serving God is better than staying in the position and in the state that they're in. And let them turn towards Jesus because they see the blessing upon a brother or sister that I'm talking to right now in Jesus' name. And those of you that are maybe tuning in for your very first time or maybe you're been, you've been watching and, and, and God has been tugging at your soul, it's God's favor that's being extended to you. It's God's grace that's drawing you. It's something he wants to do for you that you can't do for yourself. And all he wants you to do is say, I believe that Jesus Christ came and died on a cross for me and that he was buried in a grave just for me and that he rose on the third day, conquering death and the grave just for me. That's a powerful thing. And no one would do that for you naturally, but God, he sent his son Jesus to do that. And now you can come and, and believe that and put your faith in that. And once you embrace that, there's something you need to do. Say, Lord, forgive me of my sin. Recognize that you are a sinner in need of a Savior, and that Savior is Jesus Christ. And when you ask God to forgive you and you embrace Jesus Christ, guess what happens? He forgives you right now. And now that he has forgiven you, you need to find a neighbor, a friend, a relative, somebody that knows Jesus Christ. And you need to say, I need you to baptize me in the name of Jesus for the remission of my sins. And they'll take you and put you underneath that water. It may be at a pool. It may be at a body of water. It may be a baptismal tank. No matter. It might even be your bathtub. But when they bring you out of that water, the scripture tells you that you're going to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's a promise. You're going to receive this spirit of God living on the inside of you. And you'll know you've received it when you begin to speak in a heavenly language. And the initial sign will be that you speak in other tongues as the spirit gives you utterance. That promise is to you, to your children, and to everyone around you, as many as the Lord our God is still calling in Jesus' name. If that's you, we welcome you to the Lighthouse family and also to the family of God. All you have to do is just start walking in this, learn this, and if you didn't receive the Holy Ghost right away, seek it, pray about it, and God will fill you for sure in Jesus' name. If you want to know more about us or Lighthouse of the Valley family, just go to lighthouseofthevalley.org and there's a plethora of information there for you, your family, your friends, and everyone you come in contact with. And we want to encourage you to remain on this 21-day prayer journey with us. Today is day 15. Tomorrow, let's see what will happen in Jesus' name.